Hello my friends and welcome to another situation report. Today is 283 of the Russia-Ukraine war and so let's get straight to it guys. Um, there was the situation in Novolix has been clarified and the enemy continues to attack Bakhmut and Solodar. Other sections of the front have been clarified. Um, and this was just updated, uh, well, let's see here, like 10 minutes ago. I've, this is my second video, guys. My audio, I'm not sure why, is co cutting in and out. I've tried to fix that. But uh, to, no, uh, to no avail. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. Let me zoom in here because the heaviest fighting is here in Bakhmut. So if we come here. Okay, so it looks like they have made some um, gains here. This was yesterday, or this was earlier today. And this is today. You can see they have made a little bit of gain there. Looks like the gray zone down here in Avdrivka got uh, pushed back a little, a lot actually. Okay, well that's nice to see. How about up by Bakhmuski? Nothing there. Okay, I can see a little bit of gray zone over here. Okay, let's see. There was a little bit of a change up here. Let's see here. Down here. Oh yeah, look at that. The gray zone. Uh, they're getting really closer to the... Okay, yesterday they were almost at the road here. It looks like we got pushed back a little bit. Okay, so that's that's the deep state map, guys. Okay, I wanted to show this cool video. I'm gonna link it in the description, guys, because it's it's got uh, copyrighted music. It's the background is playing ACDC Thunderstruck. Um, I wish I could. It, it's it's just a beautiful video with the music. Having said that, let me uh, play it and. Um, I believe that this is in Bakhmut, guys, so you can see uh, some more. Actually, I'm not sure because maybe uh, I'm not sure, guys. It, it does look like Bakhmut. But you can see it's a beautiful day. Sun's out, tanks out, looking for Russians. Nobody else is out. Unbelievable. I mean, I guess that's, you know, if you're in a war zone, get the hell out of there. Damn. All the destruction. Unbelievable. I feel for Ukraine, guys. And I got another, um, Translate. I got another video here from the Armed Forces of Ukraine. Wish everyone good weather, positive mood, and good luck. We work for victory. Together we will win. And this is another cool. It's got copyrighted music as well. If not, I would play it. This is up further north. As you can see, all the snow on the ground. Kicking up a lot of mud. On the hunt for Russians, guys. That's what it's all about. So, having said that, let's go look at the losses. So, for December the 3rd, they lost 510 troops, uh, 3 APVs, 8 vehicles or fuel tanks, 1 tank, 1 artillery, 8 UAVs, and then they even got 1 helicopter as well. Okay, um, Newsweek is reporting 
uh, elite Russian units take up to 40% casualties in Ukraine. And uh, NATO defense and intelligence officials are keeping a close eye on the performance and fortunes of key Russian units expected to be in the vanguard of any future Russian offensive against NATO in the Baltic region that traditionally face alliance troops across the 755-mile NATO-Russia border, soon to be extended once Finland joins the transatlantic bloc. So I got a feeling that Russia is not going to do anything against NATO, um, but they're keeping an eye on them, as they rightfully should. Okay, Pravda is reporting the general staff report. Uh, Ukraine's armed forces repel attacks near six settlements and hit five Russian command posts. And let's go to the details real quick. Over the course of the past 24 hours, the units of the AFU have repelled attacks by Russian invaders near settlements of Chernobovica and the Luhansk Oblast, Solodar, Opening, Nevelsky, Krasnohorivka, Marinka, and the Donetsk Oblast. The Russians also launched five missile strikes, 27 airstrikes, and conducted 44 artillery Ukrainian troops along the contact zone. That's pretty interesting. 27 airstrikes, and we only got one helicopter. So it's pretty tough to get their helicopters, or maybe their jets as well. Okay, guys, uh, see NBC News is reporting uh, Ukrainians tear down Russian occupation propaganda billboards in recaptured areas. And uh, in the liberated city of Kherson, Ukrainians have been tearing down a glaring symbol of occupation billboards spreading Russian propaganda throughout the southern city. That was under Russian occupation for nearly nine months. The Russians have put up billboards declaring the city part of Russia or promoting important figures from their past. Well, that's a good thing that they're tearing them down. Okay. Um, we got this uh, short clip from United 24. And Ukrainians brilliantly learned to use advanced military techniques, naval drones, smart projectiles, operating systems of war. And this video was pretty cool. And so I did want to show this. Only chance to win is to play smarter. Ukraine largely relies on advanced military technologies, high precision weapons, self-guided projectiles, and artificial intelligence. Autonomous systems, UAVs that provide reconnaissance and air strikes. Recently, the Russian fleet has faced the first in history naval drone attack. Ukraine is already raising funds for the naval drone's production. Another aspect is military software development. Ukrainians have created a unique Delta system that analyzes battlefield on a scale from a few meters to hundreds kilometers. We take an old tank, upgrade it with a tablet, and a 50 years old vehicle turns into an element of a global military operation. I'm sure they do more than just put a tab on system. Help the forces of good, donate for the naval drones production, and share this video. So I'm sharing this video, guys, trying to do my good. And that was United 24. And then we have a video here, a drone video footage of Bakhmut guys. I wanted to show this because, wow, the destruction here is just incredible. I mean, you can literally see uh, every building along this road is just demolished. And I've, I'm going to bring up another article where they question the strategic value of Bakhmut if it's all ruined. And as you can see, guys, like, what's the strategic value in taking this? This is just Russia. I don't know. This is just Russia devastating Ukraine. What else can you call that? 
And uh, Newsweek is reporting uh, Russia's costly Bakhmut offensive has limited tactical value. And so let's get into this one. Russia is throwing much of its resources into trying to take Bakhmut, but the city in the eastern Donbass region of Ukraine would only give Moscow's forces a symbolic rather than strategic prize, British defense officials have said. Um, the UK Ministry of Defense said on Saturday that Russia is investing much of its firepower along a roughly 10 mile long sector in the entrenched front lines around the city, which has been hard fought over for months. And I believe for like five months already, um, I don't understand why they're still trying to take it. And I, I did a video yesterday. I think it's because it's the, the Wagner group and they get paid by how much uh, square footage that they take. And so if they take Bakhmut, uh, Prigozhin gets a pay raise or gets a bonus. So I did want to show this guy. This is Ukrainian troops in the trenches in Luhansk region. It's a cool little video of them uh, returning fire. No music on this one, so I can't play the audio. He's got his machine gun there. You can't see the enemy. You can hear him, you know, small arms fire. I'm not sure if he ran out of bullets with the machine gun and he started using this one like I would have rather just kept on going with the machine gun myself <laughs> okay guys and so now we've got uh, Dimitri here reporting that uh, the AFU advanced in the direction of uh, Hidlovka, north of Kamina. To the north, uh, the AFU reached Chernopobivka, part of the R66 highway between Kamina and Statove, is now in the gray zone. And that's right in here. So that's where uh, the gray zone uh, shrank okay so we've got the BBC reporting uh, new images show army base built in occupied Mariupol and I found this interesting uh, the new u-shaped compound sits near the city center on its roof uh, the red white and blue star of the Russian army can be seen with letters reading for the people of Mariupol and you can see it right here like this is going to get bombed to highway to hell guys I you know it's actually saying for the people of Mariupol like 25,000 people Ukrainians died in this city and they're going to come back and they're going to bomb this and get rid of this that is for and dedicated for the people of Mariupol Okay, and now we have a test of the Toulon mini bomb launched from the Turkish Bayraktar Akinci UAV, perhaps coming to the conflict zone very soon. And so we've got a Bayraktar, I think it's got music. Yeah, it does have music. Didn't want to show this mini bomb here. I got a feeling this. This is definitely coming to Ukraine, and the next video will explain why. You can see this drone here has got a twin uh, prop engine, probably a twin turbo engine. Okay, so it takes off, remote control, fire away. 
and here's the target and you can see it's pretty damn close it did miss it up by a little bit it stayed in the little square but it missed the circle and I wanted to show you guys the new um, Barakter, the supersonic UAV with Ukrainian engines that took off for the first time and with these uh, you know Ukrainian engines you know that this is going to come to Ukraine so let's uh, this has got music too yeah. they conducted the test successfully congrats this thing just looks of me there's the supersonic engine I'm not sure if it did uh, it, they don't show more than just lifting off the ground hopefully they did more than that um, it is it's working so that's really all that they sh this is going to be in Ukraine very soon and hopefully it's got the new bomb hi right, guys <laughs> keep up the hard work okay and now so this was reported on in Iran International and Iran has officially requested Russia to help it quell the popular uprising through the sale of anti-riot vehicles and equipment and dispatch of Russian advisors as it's preparing for a long-term confrontation with protesters, according to reports obtained by App International. Okay, so as you can see here, it's got this truck with the this guard here. Um, interesting that uh, Iran asked for Russia anti-riot vehicles equipment and advisors the uprising is getting so bad I, I hope that the protesters you know overthrow the Iranian government and uh, we get rid of them as well and so let's keep it pushing guys Okay, oh my goodness. Um, Julia Davis, she's reporting. Meanwhile in Russia, in all seriousness, pundits, experts on Russian state TV argue whether President Vladimir Zelensky is the Antichrist or just a small demon. This was really painful, guys. Um, there's translation here at the bottom. I'm going to let it play uh, just for a little bit. Like, I, you know. They're saying that he's a demon and the Antichrist, and yet who invaded who? These guys, that, oh, they, they get paid to spout nonsense. So, having said that... I never thought that Zelensky is a satanist. You used the right word. But when you said about satanism, I think that you are very clear. And they can only do that, as you said, who are saying поклоняются совсем да, другому, хвостатому. врагу рода человечества. И его, и, к сожалению, Зеленского его политику поддерживают не только США, а и... From support from the United States, they always come back... Uh, не только США, not only а... From, yeah, but from the United States. Именно под... благодаря поддержке США вот это происходит в Украине. Это, это катастрофа, Я... это просто Но... катастрофа. Сейчас, Орек. Хочу продолжить эту тему болезненную очень такую религиозную, психологическую, народную тему, да, и надо акценты ставить конкретно и э, не стесняться. Я думаю, православная церковь должна провозгласить Зеленского как официально приход антихриста. Официального yeah. антихриста. Этот человек... He is officially the antichrist. Like, how can you even watch this nonsense? Like... Who invaded who, guys? All right, I, I'm gonna leave a link in the description if you want to watch this yourself. Like, it's tough for me, guys. I, I'd prefer not to. And having said, dealt with that nonsense, here's the Christmas tree at Checkpoint Charlie in Berlin, guys. So, and you can see it decked out with uh, the Ukrainian flag. 
um, and supposedly Zelensky is the Antichrist. It's like you couldn't, you can't make up this nonsense. Like this is, uh, I don't know, guys. So that is my report for today, guys. And uh, having said all that, like right, there's no more. Uh, this was the only. The enemy continues to back and so I'll die up. Okay. Okay, guys. So I thank you for taking your time and uh, spending your time with me. And I hope that uh, you have a beautiful day. Um, glory to the heroes. Glory to Ukraine. Hopefully uh, this war ends soon. And uh, peace out, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm a brand new channel. And um, it would really help me. It really helps me out a lot, actually. I've been getting more views and comments and uh, trying to grow the channel. So if you would, guys, please uh, give me a like. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a beautiful day. Peace out, my friends.